Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to this video on subshells and orbitals. Now in this video we're going to be looking at the different types of subshells and the orbitals that make them up as well. And we're also going to look at the very important electron configuration which is always asked in exams and we're also going to look at some of the odd ones such as transition metals in particular chromium and copper which don't quite behave themselves. So we're going to start with uh, looking at what we mean by a subshell. So we know that there is a shell, you would have done that from GCSE, uh, and the shells can occupy, you were told, which was two and eight electrons. We can take these shells, they actually exist, but we can take them and we can split them into what we call subshells. Uh, and we call these S, P, D and F. Uh, F you don't really need to know a lot about. Uh, so we're just going to concentrate on the top three. So the S orbital, as you can see, can hold two electrons. The um, P orbital can hold a maximum of six electrons. And the D orbital can hold a maximum of ten electrons. Now, this can actually inform the shape of the periodic table, which I'm going to show you now. So you can see here, we've got the S orbital here. We call this the S block element. So any elements that fit in here are classed as S block. This is because the outermost electrons occupy the s orbital. As you can see, we have two elements in each group in this block here, and that actually coincides with the maximum number of electrons you can fit in an s orbital, which is two electrons. Now, if you see on the next block along, this is the uh, d block, uh, and the d block fits in the middle, uh, and some of the d block are transition metals, uh, and you can see that we have 10 electrons that fit in the D block and these are elements that have outer electrons that occupy the D orbitals. So hence why we've got 10 electrons we actually have 10 uh, elements in one row in the D blocks. Okay and the last block which is over here in green uh, these are P block elements. Now P block elements can hold a maximum of six electrons in their outer shell and so all the elements on the right hand side uh, actually are in a block of six as you can see there so it fits in quite nicely okay so what we need to do now is we need to try and uh, categorize these even further and um, we can look at them in terms of rows so now we've looked at them in blocks we can look at them in rows and this is where we come into the term orbital because we can get different types of s subshell and um, the subshells are made up of orbitals so if we start to the top row here this is called the one uh, the 1s orbital, which is this one here, which is hydrogen and helium. And if we come down to the next level, we call this 2s. These are called 2s orbitals. This are 3s and these are 4s. Uh, when we get to the p's, you can see this one is 2p, 3p, 4p, etc. Uh, and this one is called 3d. Now, we're going to use these as part of our electron configuration. Um, and we're also going to tell us how many electrons we've got in. So an electron configuration is really important to get right, uh, and these are really common uh, in exam questions. So you can see here, electron configuration is made up of three parts. The number part at the start is actually the shell number, and this is actually the number as we go down the group. You can see here 1s, 2s, etc. So that's shell 1, shell 2, shell 3, and shell 4. So that's the first number. The second bit is always a letter, and that letter tells you the um, suborbital that the electron is sitting in, and the suborbital is effectively the S, P, D, or F orbital. And the little uh, superscript there at the top, so the small number above the S, and that has to be above there, it can't be the same size, uh, basically tells you the number of electrons in that suborbital that you've just stated before. And so it's really easy, it's a really methodical way of doing it, uh, and I'm going to show you how it works. So we're going to start with... Uh, carbon which is over here it's really easy all you do is you find carbon in the periodic table you can see it sits here now the key thing is to start right from the start and run your finger along the periodic table and as you go past each uh, row you write down um, what you have in terms of your electron configuration so we're going to start here hydrogen and helium so we're going to go along here now that sits in the 1s group so we're going to put 1s and we have two electrons in that shell there Okay, and then we need to move down because we still haven't reached carbon. So the next row is 2s2. So we're going to fill this one up. Carbon's over here, so we still haven't come to that yet. So that's going to be 2s2. Uh, and then we keep on going, and we're into the 2p block now. And carbon sits in the second element into the 2p block. So that's going to be 2p2. 
There you go. Simple as that. Uh, if we come into iron, which is Fe, so again, we're going to do the same. We're going to start from the top. Here's iron here. Uh, we're going to start from the top, so this is going to be 1S, and obviously the electrons are occupied in there. And the next one down, 2S2, okay, uh, and we're going to keep on going, and we've got 2P6, because we're going to fill that one, so we can only fit 6 in there. We come down to the next row, which is 3S2, and we keep on going along, 3P6. Uh, and then we come down to here. Now we come into the 4S, which is 4S2. And then finally, we actually, this is a bit weird, we actually come to the 3. And see, this is 3D, not 4D. That's really, really important. So make sure you've got that bit right. Uh, and then you can see the iron actually sits in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, element along. So that's going to be 3D6. Uh, sometimes these can be written the other way around. If you want to do it in numerical order, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, what this tells us is that the 4S orbital is actually lower in energy than the 3D orbital, uh, and that's why it comes before that. But uh, you can write it around if you like. Okay, um, but sometimes, as you can see, that was quite long, and I was running out a little bit of space there. And we can shorten this by writing a noble gas configuration. Now, you must only do this if the exam will actually allow you to do so. So make sure you read the question very carefully. But selenium, which is um, over here, uh, now you can see selenium, if we look at the noble gas that precedes selenium, if we go backwards, so we go all the way back here, the noble gas is actually argon. So what we can do is we can write AR in square brackets, and that tells us that that's the electron configuration of argon, and then we just pick up from argon with the normal configuration. You can see here's argon here, so we're gonna come back down to here, so this is 4s2, uh, and then we've got 3d10, so we need to occupy all of them, 3d10. Uh, and then we come to selenium, which is the fourth element into the 4p block, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be 4p4. And there's your electron configuration for selenium. Now, I did say that transition metals were a little bit weird. Um, and uh, we've got two specific rules that have been written up here. Now, chromium and copper electrons, they go from the 4s to the 3d orbital. Now, what that means is if we look at, co if we look at chromium first, so chromium's here. Now, if we start from, let's say if we start from the argon configuration, what you might expect is actually you might expect this to be 4s2 and then 3d1234. But actually, um, what happens is one electron jumps from the 4s orbital to occupy the d orbital. And what that gives it is a very stable, half-filled d subshell. Uh, so in other words, it has 4s1, 3d5 to get to chromium, giving it that more stable configuration. So chromium is actually going to be, so we'll start from argon, electric configuration of argon, is going to be 4s1, 3d5. And it's not going to be 4s2, 3d4. So that's one of the exceptions. Copper is exactly the same as well. So if we start from over here, again, we start from argon. Copper is slightly different in the fact that copper sits over here. But this time, um, one, S, one electron comes from the s orbital, jumps into the uh, one of the d subshells, uh, and actually forms 4s1, 3d10. We have a full d subshell, uh, and that means that the... Um, electron configuration is a lot more stable and lower in energy. So the configuration for copper is actually going to be 4s1, 3d10, and not 4s2, 3d9. So watch out for them too, because that's really, really tricky. Okay, and the final thing is actually when we ionize uh, transition metals, or these blocks here, um, actually, or any D block element, um, we are actually losing electrons from 4s orbital first, uh, not the 3D. So, for example, we can see here, here's the configuration of iron, which we've written down here. And you can see it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. Now, if it's iron 3 plus, what we're doing is removing the electrons from the 4s first, then from the 3D. So, in this case, we've got the configuration for argon. So, that means that the 4s orbital, the two electrons in the 4s orbital go first. And then because it's 3+, plus, we need to take another electron from the d orbital. 
So actually the configuration for this is going to be no 4S and all we're going to have is 3D5. That's the configuration for FE3+. Now there is a bit more on this as well uh, when we do energy level diagrams um, at AS level. So if you want to have a look at the videos for that, that will explain it in a lot more detail. But as long as you're aware of it for the time being, um, then that should be fine. But uh, as you can see, make sure you get your electron configurations correct. Make sure you are really clear in terms of how you are writing your configuration. Uh, and just watch out for them copper and chromium atoms, which are going to be a little bit of a headache for some people. But uh, as long as you know how to do it, then it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But that's it. Bye-bye for now.